Our next lesson is covering the law of cosines. Again, the law of cosines is going to be used if you have an oblique triangle, which means not up, which means it's obtuse or acute. And notice in both the possible setups for the law of cosines, I don't have any way to solve a set of proportions with the numbers they give me because I don't have two A pieces or two B pieces. So the times you're going to use the law of cosines is if they give you three sides of a triangle or they give you two sides and the included angle. So those would be the two cases of the information they give you that you'd use the law of cosines. And the law of cosines says that the third side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the first two sides. Actually, the square of the third side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. It looks like the Pythagorean theorem. Minus two times their product times the cosine of the included angle. The square of the third side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus two times their product times the cosine of the included angle. Last one I have is A. A squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus two times their product times the cosine of the included angle. So those are the three forms of the law of cosines. Notice I used words. The square of the a side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus two times their product times the cosine of the included angle. Um, so first thing I want to warn you about is if they give you three sides, you want to solve for an, a potential obtuse angle first. And the way you're going to solve for a potential obtuse angle first is you are going to pick the longest side because if it had an obtuse angle, it's going to be opposite the longest side. And you are going to use the law of cosines that has this side length on the left-hand side. So in this case, the longest side is 21, so I am going to use that version. Okay, There is a lot of algebraic rearrangement in this form of the law of cosines. You're going to end up having to take an inverse trig function. What I want to warn you about is take it step by step, nice and slow, so you do not do bad arithmetic. Several students do bad arithmetic on this. So first thing I'm going to do is write down 21 squared is equal to 11 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 11 times 15 times the cosine of the angle I'm trying to find. Now here's where students are going to mess up. Okay, They'll do some arithmetic. So I'm going to do the 21 squared. They're going to write 441 equals 121 plus 225 minus 330 cosine C. And here's where students, when they first look at it, mess this up, is they do all of this work and bring it over here. You can't do that part, bring that part over, because that's a multiplication problem. So my next step is to take 441 and subtract these two numbers. 441 minus 121 minus 225. I get 95 equals negative 330 cosine C. Next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by negative 330. And from here, I'm just going to take the inverse cosine of both sides. So I get the inverse cosine of 
negative 95 3 thirtieths, and I get 106.73 degrees. So I'm going to call it 106.7. And I knew at this point I was going to get an angle greater than 90 degrees because the only time my calculator is going to have a cosine of a negative number is if it's in quadrant 2. So I knew because that negative number I was in quadrant 2. So from this point on, you are no longer going to use the law of cosines. You are going to use the law of sines, which is the last lesson, to solve for these two pieces. So I know that the sine of A over 11 is equal to the sine of 106.7 over 21. Okay, so I get A is the inverse sine of 11 sine 106.7 over 21. So this would be 30.1 degrees. And for the last angle, I'm going to take 180 minus this minus this. So 180 minus 30.1 minus 106.7, 43.2 degrees. So if you're confused at what I did here to get the 30.1 is I multiplied both sides by 11. And then I took the inverse side of both sides. Get used to doing the same work over and over again. Reminder, you're only ever going to use the law of cosines once. Once you get to the point where you can use the law of sines, use the law of sines. And if possible, use the triangle sum theorem. So for the second example of directly using the law of cosines, they give you a side, an angle, and a side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in the version that solves for the missing side. So I know that a squared, the square of a side is equal to the squares of the other two sides minus two times their product times the cosine of the included angle. And I have no problem with you putting this directly in the calculator. So I get a squared is 3 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 3 times 14 times the cosine of 48. And I put dots because I'm leaving it in the calculator. Then I'm going to take the square roots and I'm only going to use the positive square root because it's a side length. So I'm going to hit the square root of the answer, and I get 12, approximately 12.2. And from this point, note that you can now use a proportion with the law of sines. So I know that the sine of B over B is equal to the sine of A over A, multiply both sides by 3, and then take the inverse sine. So I'm going to take the inverse sine of the fraction 3 sine 48 over 12.2, and I get 10.5. And I get the third side by doing 180 minus these two. 180 minus 48 minus 10.5 is 121.5. So let's do the sine of 121.5 divided by 14. Sine of 10.5 divided by 3. Okay, in the relationships there are some rounding errors in here, so Anything that's in blue is approximate, but I get approximately 0 .060 something for all of my law of sine relationships. <coughs> <coughs> so, 
So that's how you use the law of cosines. And just like the law of sines, there's an area formula that you can use. If, um, but this area formula is if you are given three sides of a triangle, and it's called Heron's formula. In Heron's formula, and I'm going to use the three sides. Of, I'm going to modify this one a little bit. Heron's formula, H E R O N, tells us that the area is equal to the square root of this formula. Okay, it says the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C where S is called the semi-perimeter, which means it's half the perimeter of the triangle. So in this case, S is equal to A plus B plus C over 2. So the way I use Heron's formula to calculate the area is I put my square root symbol, and I'm going to have four numbers multiplied together. Next thing I do is I calculate S. S is these three added up. So I end up with 36, 46. 46 divided by 2 is 23. Okay, so the first number in here is 23. Times 23 minus 10, which is 13. Times 23 minus 15, which is 8. Times 23 minus 21, which is 2. And I leave it like this, then I look at it really quick. If I wanted to know the exact answer, I would not stick it into a calculator. I would simplify this radical. And notice, 8 times 2 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. 13 is prime. 23 is prime. So I know what's left underneath the radical is going to um, stay there. So the actual area here would be 23 times 13. 4 root 299. Okay, and I believe if you have one of the white calculators or the black calculators, if you type this in the calculator, it should give you the exact same answer. 23 times 13 times 8 times 2. Um, it does not give you, my calculator got me approximately 69.166. If I type this in, 4 root 299. I get the same thing. So calculator does not do this simplification for you. So if I want an exact answer, you're going to need to do the analysis by hand. Okay, so Heron's formula, find the semi-perimeter, multiply the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus each of the side lengths, and then take the square root, and you can calculate the area of a triangle if you are given three sides of a triangle. And again, that will work for any triangle.